Hello, this is James D'Angelo and welcome to the Bitcoin 101 Blackboard series. Today we're just going to do a very, very simple, the most basic possible tutorial on paper wallets and cold storage. Now people are very concerned about how to store their Bitcoins and how to protect their Bitcoins and it is the most valid concern of any in the Bitcoin world because that's what we'll miss the most about banks. If you put your money in the bank, you sleep okay at night. But with all these Bitcoin thefts and all these wallet thefts, people are very, very nervous. And like most things with Bitcoin, the best solutions are so offbeat and so strange that there's sort of an awkwardness to setting it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through two of the best methods for storing your Bitcoins, but we won't go through all the steps to make them the most secure. We're just going to give you an introduction to how people make paper wallets and how they do cold storage and point you in the right direction to protecting that better. And then we'll eventually do more and more detailed videos about security and more and more detailed videos of how to store your paper wallets and how to protect them better and how to store your cold storage and how to protect that better. But let's just run through and do a little flavor of how to make paper wallets and do cold storage. And so I'm sitting here right next to my printer and that's how we're going to make our paper wallet. We're going to run some stuff off on the printer, but I'm also sitting here with my little USB thumb drive, okay? And this is gonna be my cold storage and my printer is gonna make my paper wallet. So we're gonna make paper wallets and start with cold storage, but the real important thing that we're gonna do, and it's very important, is we're gonna basically be making practice wallets and practice cold storage so you can get good enough at it to do it seriously. And there's actually a real advantage to making sloppy wallets. Okay, sloppy wallets are things you leave around your house and let people take the address off or, or cold storage or, or figure out how to take the Bitcoins off it. You put five cents on it, you put three cents on it, right? But you can actually track those addresses and if the five cents and three cents and all that's disappearing, well then you know that someone around is taking money off of your wallets. So I actually really like sloppy wallets. I leave them all over my computer and then I kind of watch them every now and then, right? And if your sloppy wallet is empty, well, you know that somehow someone got to them, right? You might have some malware, you might have some hacking. So sloppy wallets are actually a good first line of defense to find out if the thieves are coming. And then when you make better and better paper wallets and better and better cold storage, right? That'll be so much more secure. So you see them hitting your sloppy wallets and then you know you have to be even more careful, okay? So sloppy wallets are great. And today we're gonna make a few of them. So here we go, let's get started. The best place to start with all of this stuff, and there's a number of great offerings, right? I, I forget what they're all called, but the most common place to start generating your own addresses, generating your own wallets, instead of relying on an online wallet like Coinbase or some of these other wallets, right? We're gonna actually create our own wallets and keep all the data and information ourselves. Now the danger clearly is if we print that paper wallet and we lose it, well, <laughs> then we lose our Bitcoins. So when we print a paper wallet, we usually like to make one or two copies of them and put them in safe places. Remember, if someone stumbles upon your paper wallet or your cold storage and gets access to your private keys, that's as good as giving your money away. So, so most of this is common sense and people will be able to extrapolate how to better protect their Bitcoins after watching this video. But our favorite place to start is Bit address.org and it comes right up. Now, as the web page is opening, it's going to ask you to kind of move your mouse around a little bit to add some randomness. And it's actually calculating and seeding the random number generator with your mouse movements. And then the page comes up and bang, you have a brand new Bitcoin wallet. And we'll open the page here a little bit so we can see it. Okay. And this wallet has two sides. The share side over here that's your public key, that's your public address. You can give this key or this address to anyone and they can send money to you. This address doesn't allow anyone to take money out. It only is one way, it allows money to go in. It can also be used by anyone to check the account balance. So if you go to blockchain.info, right, which will also open up for this tutorial, and is one of the best sites for Bitcoin because it has so much information and so many tools. You can go to blockchain.info and in their search window, well, you can put in, and in that search window, you can paste in that address and hit search and it'll tell you 
everything about that account. Well, hopefully Bit Address has done a good job and given you a brand new address, so it should say something like this. No transactions found for this address. It has probably not been used on the network before. But we could also put in another address. I can put in the donation address for our channel here, World Bitcoin Network, and you can see all the transactions that have happened. We don't get a ton of donations, but we get some rather nice ones. And you can see exactly when they came in and how much they were for. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just stretch this window out so I can get the search window up there. And then I'm gonna paste in the donation address for World Bitcoin Network. And as soon as you hit return, it brings up all the transactions that have ever happened on this particular address. And here they are. Okay, so total received at this point is $5,187.69, and the final balance is 23.19. So all the money has been taken out and moved around. Okay, and this is actually an address that I have through Coinbase. So Coinbase plays a lot of games with your Bitcoins, right? They move them all over the place to protect them, this and that. But we haven't even pulled any of our Bitcoins out. It just moves them to different spots on Coinbase. Um, and you can see every single transaction that's ever been made. And you can see the donations that we've gotten. And we've gotten recently some really nice donations. We don't know who these people are, but what a nice donation. 245 bucks. It was around 170 bucks a week ago when the donation came in. And we've gotten a few of those. Okay, but you can see all of that right here on blockchain.info for any Bitcoin address. All right, so let's go back to bitaddress.org, and these are really the two websites that we're going to be using to do all of this stuff today. So what bitaddress.org is, it's a bit of open source code that generates Bitcoin addresses, and it generates them in sort of different ways. You have a paper wallet option for you to print, you have bulk wallet, brain wallet, vanity wallet, wallet details, and we'll go into all of those in other videos. Today, we're just gonna stay on this single wallet page, okay? And what Bit Address claims to do, and we've looked through the code, so they're really doing it, is that they generate a fresh address for you and a fresh private key, and we haven't yet spoken about the private key. But the private key, is very, very sensitive. If you have any real money, you don't want to show off the private key. So we've got this private key sitting right here, and this private key is probably going to be checked by some people when they see this video to see if there's money in here. And maybe we'll put in a dollar or two just to see if people are watching the video and pulling the money off. But here's the private key. You don't want to let anyone see this. Anyone who sees this private key or gets a hold of this private key can pull all the money out of this public address. Okay, so this is secret and this is private, right? Banks don't act like this. They never give you something that's so sensitive, right? If you forget your password at your bank or if you forget your ID, they'll kind of work it out and decide whether to give you funds. It's sort of a human interface. Bitcoin is just completely amoral, right? If some thief gets a hold of this private key and takes out the funds, no one at no bank is going to stop them. Bitcoin just gives them the funds, okay? So you have to be very, very careful, 10 times more careful with your money than you've ever been. Bitcoin does a lot of things very, very well, but individual security is not one of them. You have to take the entire responsibility for security onto your own shoulders. Everything else is kind of nice. It's kind of free, it's kind of easy to use. It gives you banking on your phone, gives you trust on your phone, gives you the ability to send money around the world very fast, very cheap. But security, woo, we're gonna do lots of videos on this, right? This is a never ending topic and it will be a never ending topic for Bitcoin. There's gonna be no solution proposed that's gonna make Bitcoin security a lot better than it is now. And right now it's difficult. You really have to know what you're doing. Okay, so that's really it. You basically now understand how the public address works and the private address. Now, if you lose the public address, well, that's okay because you can generate it from the private key. The private key really has all the information you need to do something with that account. So the public address and the private key are related mathematically via a one-way function. So you can just plug your private key into a function generator that will always generate the same public address, right? And they even have that function right here in bitaddress.org. You can go into wallet details. I'm gonna copy this go into wallet details and it asks you enter your private key and you can paste it there and it will bring up the same public address every time. 
okay? So all you need is the private key. If you're really just going to store one thing, just store your private key. Don't just store your public address because you'll have no way of accessing those funds. Okay, so we've been blabbing a little bit, but let's move forward. Let's create a paper wallet. Okay, so let's go back to single wallet. And you'll see this button right here. You can click and generate a new address, right? And we've talked in other videos. There are kajillion, quadrillion, zabillion different addresses in Bitcoin. So many that the odds of you ever generating two of the same ones is almost zero. Okay, so it's unlikely that if you clicked here all day and click this generate new address that you would ever in your lifetime generate the same one. And that's how Bitcoin network is protected by the sort of actuary thing of big, big numbers. Numbers so big that no humans really ever had to consider them. The amount of addresses, different addresses in the Bitcoin network are comparable to the amount of atoms in the universe. That's a lot. Okay, so we're just generating some new addresses and their private keys. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick one that looks a little fun. Let's see if the, anything fun comes up. Um, look at that one. Ah, 17 squa. Squa. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. Okay, I like that. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to generate from this combination of private key and public address, we're going to generate a paper wallet. And I do it fairly simply. I actually copy the private key, the part that I'm really concerned with, and then I just do a screen capture of this. Okay? And I take both the private key and the public key, and then I get a little file on my desktop, and I paste the private key into the name. Okay? And then I open that up, and I say print. And up comes my little HP DeskJet printer, and it's kind of rotated nice, so it'll look nice on the page. And I say print. And I'm generating my first paper wallet. Remember, a wallet's just any collection of a private key and a public address. So it's really just a private key. Okay, that's a wallet, because you can always generate the public address from the private key. Okay, and this should be printing. And here we go. And ta-da, this is a paper wallet, okay? So we've got one paper wallet, fully usable. You can hold this up to your computer and it will scan these codes. You can hold it up to your iPhone, it will scan these codes and you can send money to this QR code. You can even hold up this QR code and your private key will be deposited in your phone. You could put it into a wallet or something like that. Or you could just send money to this address. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to send money to this exact address. And the first person who figures out how, and it's very, very easy, is going to be able to pull out the $1 that I put in there. Or maybe they'll add some more money. We'll see how people react. So I'm going to go to my Coinbase account, and I'm going to copy this public address, because that's your send to address. I'm going to say send money. I'm going to paste it in here, enter an email or Bitcoin address, and I'm going to put $1 in. Now, always, always be careful. I really kind of hate the fact that they always bring up the Bitcoin window or the dollar window, and maybe you'll someday type in the wrong thing. So say I want to send $10 and accidentally type 10 Bitcoins. That would be a pretty big mistake, right? It'd be nice if you could just turn off one or the other and only think in one format. But you have to be careful. Make sure you type $1 in the $1 area. You can type any message you want. Blah, 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 paper wallet. And I hit send. And what's going to happen is, within minutes, this transaction is going to update. So you'll see exactly when I shot this video. you see exactly when I send it. So you sent Bitcoin to an external account. I sent 0 0.001081 Bitcoins, okay? And that will go to this address on this paper wallet. Now. Clearly, I'm doing things sloppy, and I like to make sloppy wallets, right? I like to leave little wallets around because if some thief comes to my house and he knows I own Bitcoin, he's going to see all these things all over the place and he's not going to know which one to use. It'll slow him down, right? I also like to do sloppy wallets and leave them on my computer, right? So I have a dollar in them or 50 cents because if someone's going to hack into my computer, they're going to run into those things and start pulling the money out of them. My guess is malware is not going to go, okay, leave a dollar in or leave two dollars in. If I start seeing my sloppy wallets, the ones that I leave all over my computer being emptied, 
I know that someone's come onto my computer in some way. And I have my other Bitcoins, my bigger stash of Bitcoins, protected in a much better way, in a way that we'll talk about in other videos. But one way to start protecting your paper wallet is just to simply, and you'll see a lot of people do this, they kind of fold over the secret section, right? And then you can fold it over a number of times so that you can't hold it up to the light. You can staple it there, you can put tape over it, and then you can just sort of hide it somewhere, right? Hide it in behind your dresser or something so that any thief that comes in is going to have to do a lot of work to figure it all out. And fortunately, most thieves right now are coming into your house probably won't even recognize this. But you could also put it on funny paper, you could put it on newsprint, you could put it, you know, you could write like math equations on it, make it look like old homework or something like that. No thief will want to touch that. There's a lot of ways to protect your paper wallet. The beauty of paper wallets is almost anywhere you put it in your house, it's going to be safer than on your computer that's online. All right. Hackers are coming for your Bitcoins. As the price of Bitcoin goes up exponentially, as the more users are adopting Bitcoin exponentially, you're going to get thieves coming into a Bitcoin space exponentially. And the most thieves that you're going to see, and we've already seen tons of them, are running malware. They're hacking into people's computers and they're stealing their Bitcoins. And clearly, if I generated this paper wallet on a computer that wasn't attached to the Internet and never attached to the Internet, it would be impossible for any computer hacker to get at this paper wallet and get the information off of it. OK, so that's one thing to start thinking about. I did mine on a computer right now that's attached to the Internet as sloppy as can be. Again, I like sloppy wallets, and that was one of our ideas, to create a sloppy paper wallet. As you start thinking forward, think about doing it on a computer perhaps you gave to your mom that never connects to the internet and can't connect to the internet, right? And then you can download this bit address software, right? And I like bit address because if you say save, right? File, save page as, it'll save it as one file. Very few web pages, if you say save page as, will save as one file. Bitaddress.org wrote the software so it saves as one file. And you can put the Bitaddress software on any USB device or anything. And now you can open it up on your mom's old computer that can't connect to the internet. And you can generate your paper wallets there. They're a lot safer, okay? We're done with paper wallets. Now we're going to move to cold storage. Really the same basic idea. Somehow you've got to put what you put on this paper wallet onto this, okay? And the more secure you do it, the more you do it on computers that aren't connected to the internet, the more secure it will be. So what am I going to do to put this on here? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to take that file that I just printed and I'm going to copy it to this. That's cold storage. Really, they're both cold storage. But people like to call this paper wallets and people like to call this cold storage. So I'm going to take the file I just printed where I copied the private key and just drag it onto my USB drive. OK, so I'm going to take the file I just printed and I'm going to copy it onto my USB drive. Now, clearly, there's a million ways to be more secure than what I just did. You can encrypt the file that I just printed. You can do other things to protect it. But as soon as I put that file onto this and I erase it from my computer, I'll have created my first level of cold storage. And once again, I'm connected to the internet. This is a sloppy cold storage wallet. But I highly recommend getting started with cold storage and paper wallets with very small amounts of money and very sloppy wallets. And then after the ideas and how to print up your paper wallets and how to do your cold storage sink in, then you're ready to move more and more money over. But you got to really move slow with this stuff because mistakes, right? If you copy the wrong file or you didn't put the private key on there or if you printed it up wrong, you're going to lose your money. OK, so this video is just an introduction to the ideas. And as you start thinking more and more about how they work, well, then you'll start thinking more and more how to make it more secure. And we'll make more videos on that. But this is just the beginning. So let's go to the desktop. OK, and there's my file that I printed up and it's got the private key right there. Juicy private key. Maybe I'll put a little money in that and see who takes it off. If they'll tell me they took it off, that'll be fun. Um, but I'm going to put in my USB drive or my wife's USB drive. And there it is. And now I'm going to take this file and I'm going to copy it here. Boop. Done. Okay, now I'm going to delete this file right here. Boop. 
gone. And I'll empty my trash. And then I'll eject this. And now I have a copy of that Bitcoin wallet right here. And I could store this, put this away. Ideally, what you'll do is maybe you'll use a few of these, all right? Because what if this gets a little buggy over time or some water spills on it or Coke spills on it? What a lot of people do is they start sticking these things in the safe deposit boxes. But again, you're going to probably want to encrypt it, right? And my favorite way of doing this is you, you encrypt your file, right? And you keep the password for the file on here at your house comfortably, okay? And you leave the encrypted file in your safe deposit box. That way, if you die, right, your family could end up at least getting your Bitcoins. And hopefully you'd be happy about that. But that's just one recommendation. And we'll go over some more of these recommendations later. But we have one copy now of that Bitcoin private key, which is all you really need on this. Okay. And if we notice, well, we never got rid of it on the bit address org.page. But this is JavaScript. It's all client side, all right? They're not generating these addresses on their server. We've looked at the software pretty heavy and we'll probably do a video about all the software that's in there. It's all standard stuff. It's long, it's a little confusing. SHA-256, RipeMD and all that, but eh, that's the way it is. Now, to get rid of this, I can just press generate new address. Now it's gone, okay? So if you had sent money to it and you hadn't copied it or you don't have a good copy of it, that money is probably going to be gone forever. So let's just do this all one more time really quick so you can see it all bang, bang, bang. Okay. Generate new address. Okay. 19 ZXXVT. That's cool to me. Do a screen capture. Okay. Make sure you get both the private key and the public key. But I also like to copy the private key here. Okay. And there's ways to hide your private key even on your paper, paper wallet using this BIP38 protocol. And we're going to do a video on that. It's genius stuff, okay? But we're going to copy the private key. We're making sloppy wallets today. Copy. Then we're going to go to the desktop. Boom. We're going to see the screen capture that we just did. I'm going to replace the name with my private key. Pretty sloppy wallet, but it's handy. Then I'm going to open it. Drag it down so you can see it, right? Here's my private key. Here's my public address. Here's the private key again, and then I'm going to hit print. And I'm making a brand new paper wallet. Okay, and here's my paper wallet. Here's the public address I can send money to. Here's the private key I want to hide from everybody's eyes on earth. And then you can staple it, tape it, you can hide it behind your dresser, do whatever you want. And now we're going to put that onto cold storage. So we've got the file on your desktop. You insert your USB, wait for it to come up, and then you copy that file over. Okay? Then you delete it off your computer. If you don't delete it off your computer and your computer's connected to the internet, it's not cold storage. That's hot storage. It's warm storage, right? Hackers can get in. So remember, the idea is to take your Bitcoins and put them in a place where no malware can get to, okay? No malware in history can jump off the computer and start grabbing the information off this paper, at least once it folded. Remember, your cameras and stuff on your computer could see them, okay? Now we'll take out our USB drive, and we'll put that in a place where no one can find it or no one can get it, and ideally make a few of them. Remember, Bitcoin's great because you can back up your money, but Bitcoin's also dangerous because you can back it up. And if you have it in five places, well, it gets a little freaky. Okay. Okay. So here's the address we just officially put in cold storage and it will only go on cold storage when I get rid of it on my screen and I can't go back. And notice you can't hit back in bit address. This is JavaScript, right? It's not going to remember what you've done. Okay. So you can generate lots of new addresses, but you can't go back to the ones you just missed. Now, before we go, we're going to do just one thing. I'm going to go to Wallet Details, and I'm going to go back to our original SQUA address because I had copied the private key and it was in memory. Okay, so it was unofficially cold storage. And now I'm going to copy that public address, and I'm going to go back to Bitcoin address and see if the money we sent is actually arrived into that address yet. Okay, here we go. So you paste it right in there in the blockchain and you see if any action has happened at all. Okay. And there it is. There's the transaction I sent to 
17 squat. I sent a dollar, now it's worth 99 cents. I lost a penny. Okay, it's an unconfirmed transaction. We talk about that in other videos. But the beauty is that transaction will be on the blockchain for all of time. So as long as Bitcoin exists, you'll be able to paste this transaction number in, right? This is the transaction number right here and see the exact time, date and amount that I sent to this paper wallet that's sitting right here. Where is it? Okay. Boom. And there's the private key. Okay. Hope that helps. Hope that gets you started thinking about cold storage and paper wallets. Don't be intimidated by them, but definitely don't start and jump in and go all the way. Don't send 100 Bitcoins to your first paper wallet, okay? Don't put 100 Bitcoins in your first attempt at cold storage. What you want to do is put money in your paper wallets, take money out of your paper wallets, play around with paper wallets for a week or so before you start doing the real serious stuff. And by then, hopefully, we'll have made some more serious videos as well to be able to walk you through the next steps. Okay, so that's it. Sloppy wallets, they're great. Very important to have around, leave them all over the place, right? Sloppy wallets, let the burglars come in and have no idea what they're doing, okay? One way to throw off burglars is have a billion wallets around. That'll take them a while to just sort them all out. And if you printed up a billion wallets, which you can, you still wouldn't have used one of the same addresses that's ever been generated phenomenal math that's going on. Okay, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, do all those things that you do. We'll see you at the next video. The next video will move deeper into this world of security. Very, very important stuff with Bitcoin. It's the one place where you're going to feel all on your lonesome, okay? And it is a lonely place. Bitcoin security is a lonely place and you have to take it serious. <whistles> see you at the next video.